Welcome to a special live edition of whatever this is. It's <laughs> it's spontaneous. It's Fitz and Big B, your guys. Let me retweet this so everyone knows we're out there. Uh, Kansas State wins 78-74 in the uh, second round of the Big 12 tournament on Wednesday night in Kansas City at the T-Mobile Center. Down 10 at half, looking dead in the water. Yep. K-State found a way. They found a way to get off the mat and win. And uh, that way was named Day Day Ames. Yeah. Look, the stats won't show what an impact the freshman had on the game, Brian Hanley. But once they just said, Day Day, take over, eight yep. turnovers in the first half, pretty typical for K State. They got outscored by nine and trailed by 10, uh, nine off of turnovers. They let Day Day run the offense. They had two turnovers in the second half, and they absolutely smoked Texas coming out of the gate. They held on for the four point win, but Brian Hanley, a huge win for Jerome Tang's Wildcats. Gigantic win. Um, you know, they played well in the second half, and I'll be honest, it's about as well as I've seen them play because they took care of the basketball, you know, and we had been talking about Day Day Ames playing all year. Uh, he's the best pure point guard that they have on the team. And, and one of the things is, is that, you know, earlier in the season, he just didn't get a lot of time and he was turning it over. And we thought, you know, if he's going to turn it over, you might as well put him out there. But he figured it out today, played extremely well. The guys that needed to play well, they played well. It was a total team effort. Uh, but I, I got to give the coaching staff some credit, too, because they again, they were prepared for what Texas was trying to do in the second half. The first half, they turned it over. They, they turned everything around. You got to make those halftime adjustments. They did it. And K-State came out with a huge win that, you know, I, I just listened to Joe Lenardi just a second ago, and they said K-State was the 72nd team, you know, out of 68. He said they're number 72 right now. So you get another win tomorrow. I don't know, Fitz. I don't know. <laughs> you should be in at that point. Um, yes. And uh, I said this. Earlier, you might just skip over Dayton if you beat Iowa State twice in five days. Yeah. Because Iowa State's probably sitting on the two, uh, maybe the three line of the NCAA tournament. Yep. And to, to pull that off would be really impressive. Uh, but you got to go do it. And let's be blunt here, Brian. You can't start the game the way you did against Texas. Iowa State is not going to let you do that in Kansas City because you think Iowa State's good in in Ames. Oof. Yeah. Kansas City is their is their secret home. They love it there, but I I can't even tell you how impressed I was by Kansas State in the second half after such a mundane lackluster performance in the first half. It's frustrating yeah. to know this is what this team is capable of doing. They just can't discipline themselves to do it until now. Yeah, you know, th that is frustrating, you know, because uh, I know a lot of fans out there think, man, if they would have played this way, you know, or in, during the season, maybe we get two or three more wins, you know, out of this. And we're not even talking about being on the bubble. But, you know, it is what it is at this point. But I, I do like the way that they bounce back. I do like that because they had every single reason in the world to quit at halftime. Is that we're down 10. Texas is good. We're not playing well. We can just pack this thing in. And that's why I give a lot of credit to the coaching staff because they didn't let them quit. Uh, and, and the guys, they probably, you know what, let's just go out here. The first four minutes, let's see what can happen. Well, lo and behold, first four minutes, <laughs> they're right there. And, and so that changed everything. I, I couldn't be more proud of them. I'll be honest with you, Fitz. I'm proud of the guys because they fought. I'm too. I'm too. Um, and I'm proud of the coaches for making some adjustments. They went to yeah. – Basically a four guard attack, four out with Kaluma out there, kind of functioning as the four, yep. but he was playing away from the basket. They moved Gasan into the post, something we thought they might do, but Texas provided the right matchup to do it. They spread the court. They were much more selective in their dribble penetration, mm -hmm. more effective in that. And again, Day Day Ames would get into the paint and distribute the ball, whether it was an assist or not. You look at his stats, it looks like an okay game, but it doesn't measure the impact he had on the game as Tyler Correct. Perry scored 21, got it done at the line without him shooting free throws late game situations. I don't know where this team would be, right. uh, but uh, they all seem to slip into more comfortable roles in the second half. And 
you know, credit the players, but also the coaches for getting that done. Uh, I, I kind of want to say, where has this been Jerome Tang? Why didn't you just let in those frustrating games and they're turning it over so often, turn it over with day day, let him learn. And maybe they time this perfectly to get him ready for this moment. And I don't disagree with any of that. Uh, and maybe that was the plan all along. I, I highly doubt it because I don't think they would have put themselves on the on the the brink of not making the tournament. So I don't think that was necessarily the plan. But you know what? It worked tonight. So good for them. And you you did bring up a good point. Fitz is talking about you know his. If you look at the stat sheet, it's not going to show that he was the player of the game out there. But I know K-State fans are going to hate me for saying this. And trust me, I'm throwing up a little bit in my mouth when I say this. But it kind of reminds you a little bit about Dwan Harris from KU. He okay. just makes the plays for his team to win. Doesn't always show up in the stat sheet. Doesn't have 20 points. But he just makes winning plays. And I think that's what you need out of your point guard. When your point guard is not a guy that's going to go out there and score 20 points a night, you need guys that are going to make winning plays. And basically the last 10 minutes of that basketball game, he made winning plays to help K-State win that game. Exactly. We are recapping Kansas State's 78-74 come from behind victory over Texas. In the second round, it's kind of hard to keep track of all these rounds, yeah. of the Big 12 tournament because this advances them. They had a bye, but it advances them to the quarterfinals. They still got three more to go if they want to win this thing or at least play in the championship. So a lot of work to be done. Make sure you're clicking the thumbs up button on the live so that uh, people know you're enjoying this. We're seeing some comments pop up. Make sure you drop the comments in the chat uh, because we'll probably turn to that here for some topics pretty quickly. And uh, make sure you're subscribing to the page. This and the Big 12 Insiders page. Do that favor for us right now. Yes. Get that taken care of. We need to get a thousand subscribers on that Big 12 Insiders page. We're not streaming this to this because this is a K-State show, but uh, make sure you take care of that and and subscribe to this YouTube channel for Go Power Cat. Kansas State advances to face Iowa State. Big B, um, Iowa State's really good, but I I like how Kansas State matches up with them if if they match their physicality and hustle, because what makes Iowa state so good is they've got some guys that to use the cliche are dogs. They get yeah. after it. Yeah. They get after the ball when it's on the floor, when it's coming off the rim, they'll stick an elbow in your chest. They'll get after you and K state matched that in the second half in Manhattan. They've got to do it again for the full 40 in this game tomorrow night in Kansas city. Yes, absolutely. Because the, the thing about Iowa State is it, just what you said. They're, they're going to get after you when you dribble. You know, just just simple dribbling. They're going to get after you. They're going to put a hand on you. They're going to try to bother you, do anything to get you uncomfortable. And, again, on Saturday, K-State handled that, you know, and, and they matched it even on the defensive end. Now, that's the one thing. K-State's always going to play good defense. They're going to do that. Yeah, I go, But the they were is. able to match that uh, that physicality. I think Arthur Kaluma is going to have to be another guy because although they have some some a, a athletic players, I think Arthur, I think he's a matchup issue for them, per se. I think he's a guy that can cause them problems. So if he gets aggressive and takes it to them, because again, he's a physical guy as well, I think that's where we can cause them more problems. We just have to play well, take care of the ball. And if we do that, we got a shot. Yep, I totally agree. It's going to be a very interesting day tomorrow. We're going to – Kansas and Cincinnati, I wish I hadn't turned that off, are getting ready to go or they're going right now. Um, and I, I would imagine Cincinnati wins this against a shorthanded Kansas team, but uh, this is going to be a very interesting day of basketball uh, yeah. tomorrow uh, because yeah. uh, we've got some teams in this tournament, um, K-State and Cincinnati, that are desperate for wins to get in the field. Uh, we see this over here um, from Austin. Uh, one more win and the Cats are in. We think so. I mean, again, we don't really know anything for sure from the, what the committee's thinking. The committee might have them in right now. Joe Lenardi doesn't, and I won't expect Joe Lenardi to really have an accurate bracket until all the games are played and he gets leaked information. Right. Um, so I don't usually lean on him too much. Uh, but I think we can say that K-State's had more 
uh, work to do, if only because they haven't passed the eye test. Right. This game, they passed the eye test. They've had other games where they've won and not looked particularly good. This was an NCAA tournament team in the second half. They looked like they deserved to be in there. And we'll see if they need that second win. Maybe they just play Iowa State to the wire. It gets them in into Dayton. Um, you know, as, as I've said, you, you want to avoid Dayton uh, because nobody's really said, yay, we get to go to Dayton right. uh, ever. Not in just basketball, ever. <laughs> and um, it's uh, just get past that with a win and get into those semifinals and, and see what happens on uh, Friday and just keep going. Uh, Arthur Kaluma made it very clear after the game that, uh, yeah, this was great. Uh, we're not done. We're, you know, he immediately shifted. Jerome Tang was like, hold on, let's wait. Let's enjoy this for a little bit. And then let's get after uh, preparing for it. But uh, this team seems laser focused. They did not in the first half, but boy, they, again, they woke up. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. And by the way, we do have something in here. I'm mentioning the weather. I hope I stay on the air. We have a very severe storm rolling through right now. In fact, I just got a, a, a severe thunderstorm warning alert on my phone, expecting three-inch hail in Manhattan. Oh, um, and uh, there's a tornado warning east of here along the crossing I-70 about at Alma, so it's not that far from here. So be careful out there. Kansas City, it's on your way. If you're in Power & Light watching this, I don't know why you're watching us in Power & Light, but <laughs> be careful. You might want to sneak out a little bit early because it's going to get nasty. Um, but speaking of nasty, you mentioned it, Brian defense, man, this team plays great defense. That's the only thing they survived on at times this year. Yep. And when you, when you match defense with, with two turnovers in the second half and 55% shooting, you look, uh, you take a good team like Texas that's solidly in the NCAA tournament field and you make them look silly. Yeah. That, that's what they did. You know, they, they tighten the grips on the defensive end. That's how they got back in the game. You know, they, they got back in the game by playing solid defense, you know. Uh, and I don't even really think that they were playing awful defense in the first half, but it wasn't to the level that was going to win the game. Let, let's just right. say that. But when they turned it up a notch and then you're like, okay, K-State's ready to roll. And then once they started scoring, I was like, well, this game's going to come down to the wire because if K-State's going to continue to play like this or we're not turning the ball over, I go, we've got a chance. And that's what they did. Look. I was just, like I said before, I was impressed with the poise that they played with. Uh, and I'll keep stressing on that because they had every reason to just, you know what, we're down, it's over. Yeah. Nobody thinks we're making it to the tournament anyway, so we can quit. Let's just go out here the first four minutes, and if they blow us out, it is what it is. They didn't do that. They fought. Coaches made the adjustments. But I, I just love the way that this team plays defense because when you do that, even when you turn the ball over, even if, you, if you're playing defense the way that they do fits, you can be in games. Even when you're not shooting well, if you guard, you can be in games. And that's something, I mean, take a note from Iowa State. Iowa State has shot lousy over the last three weeks of the season. They have shot lousy, but I think they've only lost once. I go, so that'll tell you everything that you need to know. And I go, now, granted, one of those was to us, so that's a good thing. But yeah. I'm just saying is that you can take – if you can guard, that goes anywhere. That goes everywhere. So they've got a shot. If they come out and play with that kind of intensity tomorrow, they got a chance. Uh, here's another comment um, from the chat. I, um, uh, Robbie, come on. They have, they have sensitive feelings. Uh, <laughs> throwing out the horns down. <sighs> they're fragile, man. They're, they're very fragile. Um, don't make them choke on their white wine. Oh, it's Fitz, right. on Facebook, they were after get out of the cop. Now I can't repeat all the things that they said. I won't do that. Get we out of the conference. Us. How do you like that? Take a seat. I mean, it, they just got after them. And I, you know me, I love every single second of it. You live amongst them. <laughs> you live amongst them. Um, here we go. Um, Monty wants to know if uh, Tyler Perry's ankles. Okay. Uh, one of the astute observers um, that I'm friends with on Twitter uh, noticed that when Tyler got off the bus, that video, that little short video of him, the players getting off the bus, that sports uh, information puts up, he was limping as he got off that bus. He was pretty uh, careful with that ankle, and then it got rolled up on in the intentional foul. What was that kid thinking? He literally tackled Tyler Perry at a yeah. crucial part of the game. 
um, and sent him to the free throw line and K-State got the ball too. Uh, but Tyler played through it. Um, he didn't look phased by it. I think it's just something that is going to bother him the rest of the year. I'll give Tyler Perry this. He's a tough son of a gun. Yeah, he, uh, he has played. He's taken a beating. He's handled the ball. He's He's been through a lot of mental stress, and he's still there firing away. Leads the catch with 21 points in this game. Uh, but again, it was a big part of that was getting off the ball for much of the second half. Of course, late in the game, they wanted him to have the ball. If Texas was going to foul, they're going to put the guy that shoots 91% at the line. Uh, and he was 10 for 10 in this game. Tyler Perry has really turned into a, a pretty solid player. Um, I'm just going to ask this, though, Brian. What took so long to get Day Day more trusted? He's kind of disappeared in the second half lately. Coach yeah. Tang will start him, play him. He does okay. And then he just disappears in the second half. They rolled with the kid throughout the second half. I think they've needed to do it. And I think they've needed to go small a little bit. Uh, maybe they discovered a formula here just in a nick of time. Well, I, I think one of the things is I think they were they're trusting Cam Carter to be a primary ball handler. And I think that was one of the things that we all know and we've seen he's not ready to do that yet. And I think they were putting a lot of trust in him, maybe a little bit more trust in Arthur as, as being primary playmakers. And they're just not capable of doing that at a high level yet, where Day Day can do that. And tonight, they needed to do that, especially, you know, because Texas can bring pressure. Texas, can, they can get after you. And if you're not strong with the ball, then you're going to turn it over. They're going to make you turn it over. The same thing with Iowa State, is that they'll get after you. So I think that's part of it. Um, I, I, think, I think coaches was just trying to to get guys' confidence going and maybe trusting guys a little bit too much. And then finally, it's like, you know what? If we're going down, we got to go down with at least getting it the ball in our best ball handler's hands and letting them make the decision versus, you know what? We've got it in guys that aren't that's not normal for what they are trying to do, create, do those kinds of things. They're just not that good at it yet. They're yeah. just not that good at it. Well, and then we turned the ball over. And I think coach was thinking, you know what? We got to we got to at least get it to this guy to see what he can do. Not not to you know bring up something this really bothered me in the first half. Look, that this team turns the ball over. But I also think and you you played college basketball, you should only do things in games that you have done well in practice for yeah. a while. Right. Cam Carter you tried a behind the back pass in the lane in traffic. Why? These are the things that just drive me batty with this team. You can't convince me you've been doing that in practice no. with, with great efficiency. No. Um, uh, just that stuff has to stop. If this K state team wants to be what it can be as the season nears an end. But if they do, uh, Brian, I don't, I don't know how far this team could go. They, they, they're going to beat some teams if they get in the tournament. I look if they get a, if they do go to Dayton, they're going to catch a an equal team that I think K State will be far better than last time they were in Dayton with the Bruce Weber team. Uh, they got a very similar Wake Forest team and just beat the snot out of them. Um, and I think that's what will happen after going through the Big Twelve, all the nope. battles, all the nightly tests. Uh, there's no no offs. I mean, West no. Virginia can knock you in the chops and Oklahoma state beat case. It's just brutal. I think they'll look forward to catching some teams outside of the conference and be motivated in the tournament, but you got to get there. Yeah. They got to get there. Uh, tomorrow is key. They got to win the game. Um, but you're right. As far as what they can do, this is look, if they don't make the tournament and I don't even like saying that and putting that out in the universe, but we all know that they are going to be better than I would say at least 35 to 40 percent of the teams that are in the tournament or at least just as good as because K-State's got a good basketball team. They haven't always played good all season long, but they have a good basketball team. So if they're able to get into the tournament, you're right. I, I, they at least they're winning a the game, you know, depending on where they go. I don't even care if they miss it and say they get an 11 or a 12 seed. I think they're winning the game. They, they, I mean, they've been through these battles. I'm just not sure all these other teams have been through the kind of – well, matter of fact, I know they haven't. None of them are going to be playing in the Big 12 Conference. So they yeah. haven't been through these battles. Now, officiating is is key. You know how officiating in the tournament is, and 
you know, you get a, a, a crew that's out there with a heavy whistle, that can be a problem. But that'll be a problem for any Big 12 team, you know, if, if there's a heavy whistle out there. But I, I just give Kansas State a good shot. If they can get into this tournament, I think they're going to win a game or two. I thought Doug Sermons and his crew did a pretty good job. If you want to complain about officiating, I, I, if I'm Texas, I wonder what the hell was going on in the start of the second half. It, it's like Texas got nailed for like seven fouls really quickly. Um, I thought that was just – I mean, they were fouls, but that they called everything, which, you know, oh. you, you don't do in a game. But I got to say this. I thought there was an awful foul call on David Gasson, which the ball went out off of Texas. And then I saw the replay and I go, my God, Doug Sermon's got that right. Gasson grabbed him by the arm. I thought it was a well-officiated game, and maybe – uh, I feel that way because K State won, uh, you know, in, in all honesty. But uh, I just thought uh, it was more officiated like a post game, uh, like a postseason game. That they let them play a little bit, uh, but they set limitations that, for the most part, stayed the same the whole game. And that's not something we've necessarily seen through the season from Big Twelve officiating. Uh, but this crew got it right, I thought. Yeah, they did. You know, and like you said, I mean. Uh, Obviously, officiating sometimes can be subjective in how they want to call a game. Um, whoever loses, you're never happy with the officiating, no matter what. Uh, and a lot of times, even if you win, you're not happy with the officiating. But I thought it was a, an extremely well-officiated game. The one obvious miss in the second half, I think it was a drive by uh, Tyler Perry where Gasson got pushed in the back, and then he ended up pushing a guy in the back and they missed the first one, and then they called it on Gasson. And I'm like, if you saw him falling forward, you you should have seen both. But, I mean, it is what it is. They're not perfect. I understand nope. that. But uh, I thought it was a well-officiated game. Well, the fact that Doug Sermon stepped up and called that intentional foul late, and it was. I mean, it was clearly when you saw it on replay. At him. first, you're like, yeah, it was a hard foul, but was it intentional? Um, then he saw that the player hooked him on the leg and pulled him down why it's just it was very strange yeah uh so that, yeah great under a minute send tyler perry to shoot two and you give him the ball uh not a wise move uh it's good to see k-state be the smart team late in a late game uh situation like that and they have been pretty smart in late game situations that's when they've been their best jerome tang said it brian uh, this team needs the pressure he wants them to feel the need to go win one more to go do a little bit more uh, just like in overtime when they are faced with, you know, the very opportunity to do something, and this is your allotted time to do it, they have done it, and here we are. Uh, look, they needed to win three games late in the season. They got West Virginia and BYU at home, and then they lost at Cincinnati. Now they've beaten Iowa State and Texas, two quad one wins. They've got five of them now, which should get them in, uh, honestly. It apparently isn't good enough. Uh, and they they got to go shop for a sixth one. Finish the job. Yeah, got to finish the job. And I, I, just to belabor on your point there, as far as the quad one wins, I'm like, look, I know K State lost early in the season to Oklahoma. Oklahoma, it, I mean, they played a horrible game today. Uh, they finished with the same record as K State did in the conference. We've got two more quad one wins now. Granted. I know if you stack resumes or maybe you look at the net, it's not the same. But if Oklahoma can be in, I'm not sure how Kansas State can't be in. Uh, and TCU is in. Again, I know they beat Kansas State, but you just start stacking up resumes and things of that nature. I just, I'm just, i not sure how they can't be in either. So uh, I, I like where we're at. I like how we're playing, more importantly. But I would feel a whole lot better, Fitz, if we end the season – Te or Iowa State, Texas, Iowa State, and you win three of those games, I I I'll be honest, I don't know how they could keep us out. But I will say this real quick. The next game, now that could be where the problem comes in, is the next game, depending on who it is. You know, is it Baylor? Okay, well, if it's Baylor oh, and, and, we, and we lose to Baylor, it's okay. But if Baylor somehow were to get upset by somebody, you know, because, you know, tonight, if Kansas loses and Cincinnati beats them and K-State wins and all of a sudden we're playing against the Cincinnati, if we lose that game, does that keep us out? I yeah. would hope not. But I wouldn't think so. Yeah, I would hope not. But I've seen the committee do worse. So, yeah, sometimes the committee 
literally leaves you baffled. Yeah. I mean, I remember one year, and this is my favorite Joe Lenardi story. He didn't even have Stanford in the, the eight teams, the next four out or, you know, the, the first four out and the next four out. Stanford wasn't even listed. And then and the last minute he has Stanford in the bracket. Right. Uh, you know, they didn't do anything between his prediction that they weren't even on the bubble to getting into the bracket, but they, he put him in the bracket at the last second to be right. Um, maybe K-State will be the Stanford of this season. He's had it wrong the whole time in K-State's end. But in fairness, in fairness, I think if you ask most K-State fans, they will say they didn't really think this was an NCAA tournament team by eye. If you watch them play enough, you're like, ooh, they turn it over a lot. Ooh, they just don't look always put together. But tonight, they they looked it. Like, as I said earlier, they just looked the part. Um, yeah. And now they have to extend it. Yeah, they, yeah, they looked the part, you know, and that's the whole thing is, is that you want to be playing your best basketball at the end of the year. Now, the way that they played the first half, it's I don't know that you can actually say that they play, they're playing their best basketball at the end of the year because – the first half, it, it absolutely didn't look like that. But the second half was polar opposite of that. So I don't know. I, I just, if we're being honest, have we seen them play a full game at the best of their ability? I think that's one of the things that K-State fans are like, come on, guys, just a full 40 minutes. Have we seen it? And I think the answer is no. I think to win tomorrow, I think we got to do that. I think right. – with okay. all the circumstances and everything, Iowa State upset that they lost to us on Saturday, playing in the Big 12 tournament. They're, they're going to have just as many fans, if not more. That's a sign to UK State fans. Don't don't let them have more people there than us. But no doubt. It, yeah, I it, it mean, so it, I think it's going – for us to beat them, I believe they're going to give us their best shot, and we've got to put a full 40 minutes together to win. We've got an update from T-Mobile. Iowa, or excuse me, Cincinnati is leading Kansas 32-18 with 425 to go in the first half. So, obviously, yeah. without McCuller and, and Dickinson, watered down Kansas team. Uh, I thought I thought this was a smart move by Bill Self. Just, yeah, we're in the tournament. Let's try to rest these guys and uh, just kind of, I don't want to say forfeit, but let's just see what the other guys can do in, in this game. And it looks like Cincinnati, who, uh, you know, needs those wins. Uh, yes, they're they're on the outside too. Uh, Big B, you you backed off those predictions early in the year. You thought they'd get ten. I did. If Kansas State and Cincinnati somehow make a push, and somehow it's them that meet in the semifinals, they're both in. I I, I think they have to be fits. I think they have to be. They're That's right 11. on the bubble of the best conference in the country with these kinds of wins down the stretch. I think they have to be in, don't they? That would be crazy. It's, if the Big 12 gets 11 in, what's the NIT going to do? Are they going to take <laughs> UCF and then West Virginia or what? Because yeah, they're taking two from every Power 6 program. If only three teams don't get in, you got Oklahoma State and West Virginia that are that are already calling it good for the year. Guys, you might get an auto bid into the NIT. Stay tuned. <laughs> what? what I a mean, weird it world. would be wild. And like I said, I, I mean, I'm wishing for that. I, I really do. You know, I, I think, you know, I think it was last time we saw something like that. What was it? 2011, the Big East got like 11 teams in and they deserved it. They they absolutely deserved yeah. it. It was the best conference by far. And they deserved it because I think they ended up with like five teams in the Sweet 16 or something like that. It was nuts. I go, they were the best conference in the country. Well, the Big 12 is the best conference in the country. Now, with 11 teams where you would have to seed people. I don't know that we could get that many into the Sweet 16. I don't know how you're going to have to end up playing each other. But even still, I mean, if we're being honest, I, I think we deserve it. I, I just do. Now, will they do that? I don't know. But if the if the committee had any gumption about themselves, they would say, look, there was cannibalism in the best conference in the country. These teams are are worthy. They're they're more worthy than somebody else in a, in a smaller conference. Look, I know they're talking about the Mountain West and they love the Mountain West the West net ratings, but if you're going to try to tell me that six teams in the Mountain West are going to come to the Big 12 and have winning records, you're lying to me. I I, I don't even want to hear it. If you think that 
the six teams that they think are going to make the tournament in the Mountain West, if you think all, if you even think half of those teams are coming to the the Big Twelve and winning seven games, you're lying to yourself because that's not going to happen. So hopefully, hopefully they take some of that into consideration. We will see. Um, it's it now makes selection Sunday a little more interesting. A win tomorrow would make it very interesting for K State fans. Uh, but I, I also can see the selection committee saying, "Okay, well, the Big Twelve snuck a couple teams in. We're going to send them both to Dayton, um, and Cincinnati and K State has to beat someone else to to get into the main bracket." Um, I think that would be notable. I think that'd be that would be a statement in itself that two teams got in at the last second and. Then they had to go play and, and earn their way into the main bracket. We're both the same. Just make it 64 teams. This is silly. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm I'm fired up about what I saw in the second half because I, I feel like um, it's been raining and windy and cold, and I've been waiting for the sun to come out, and lo and behold, the sun came out, and it was yeah. warm, and it was inviting, and it was wonderful. Um, uh, Ashman, I, I don't – I don't know why you say I'm having too much fun tonight. I'm sheltering in my basement, in the studio with my dogs. If you if you follow along here, uh, and we got a lot of people in here, a lot of you may not watch us regularly. The dogs are always with me, and Daphne hates storms. What does she do when she gets nervous? Yeah, it's not smelling real good in here right now. Um, <laughs> she's a little gassy, and she is literally right there. I mean, if I back up, I'm gonna roll over. Um, so it's uh, I'm I'm fighting through the elements myself. Uh, dude, dude's just over here being dude. He's just casual sleeping. Uh, but uh, make sure that we got got Big B. We almost got 1,400 people in here. Do um, make sure you're subscribing to this channel. Head on over after we're done, please please head over to the Big 12 Insiders channel. Uh, we're going to try to migrate our Big 12 Insiders show to its own channel um, because, honestly, let's be blunt, Big 12 fans of other schools don't necessarily want to come to the K-State channel to watch right. a Big 12 show. Um, and I don't blame them. I, I, you know, if it was, um, you know, some other school, look, Baylor. Baylor has one of the best shows uh, on the Internet, sports shows, period. Um, those dudes have earned the credit there, uh, but uh, they also do a lot of general coverage with their channel. We do mostly K State. We need to move this over. So make sure you're subscribing both to Go Power Cat and the Big 12 Insiders. Also, if you're a K State fan and you're not subscribing to GoPowerCat.com right now, you have 50% off as this show's going and into tomorrow. Go take care of that 50% off a subscription to Go Power Cat. Uh, my recruiting staff with Ryan Wallace in charge is amazing. We got Big B pitching in more and more. Um, our, our young guys, Ryan Gilbert and Cole Carmody. And Cole did a couple post-game talks with the women, and now Gills is going to do tonight's post-game talk, which freed me up for this. Um, we got a good crew here. We got a really talented group of guys. Zach Carlson, of course, rolling along as our video and multimedia editor. Um, and this is another question here. This is pretty good. Zach wants to know the Big 12 Insiders on podcast. Not yet. I'll, I'll be really blunt here starting a podcast um you know going through all the things you need to do to get it everywhere you want it to uh is a commitment okay right. and i don't want to start a podcast that i can't keep up with because that's a whole nother exercise of getting that up um after the daily show but that show is beginning to get some legs to it uh, like we thought it would and as we move into the fall um, if, if we're still going, which big B, I, I don't, Brian, I see no reason why we won't be, uh, right. we will move that over to a podcast and video, uh, platform uh, to have it both places. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's recap here. Calico Willie just got here. What I missed, watch the game and how about the second half that that's pretty much what we spent the last 34 minutes saying. Yes. Yeah. You know, not that just got here. We've been here the whole time. <laughs> but what a second half. What an impressive showing by Kansas State. Yeah, I'm one of those guys that I, I like to be happy, but it kind of frustrates me that I've watched some horrendous basketball when they, they're capable of something like this. Yeah. They're, they're capable of it. And it's like they went in the second half at, at halftime and came out and said, okay, we're done with the turnovers. Two yep. turnovers in the second half. Two. They – it was a season low, at least in Big 12 play, for turnovers. I think it tied the season low for the season. Think about that, folks. 10 was their low for the season. 
I, mean, I I don't think Texas broke double digit turnovers in this game. At least nope. last time I checked, I didn't see it. Let's see. Texas ended up at uh, seven, seven. Yeah. They lost. That's how damning turnovers have been for this team all season long. All season long, they have just been the ball and chain holding this team back from exactly what we saw. Thank Calico. Thank you for for that. You, if you don't know how to do the super chat, um, we appreciate it so very much. Um, look, uh, here here's a great one. I love this, Terry. You're right. David Gasson brought it again. Had it turned on the past couple of weeks. I love how hard this kid plays. It, yep. Even when K State Brian isn't playing that hard. Gasan is absolutely with a bad back, a bad knee. Um, he's just beaten up. He just plays so hard. I mean, he had 16 rebounds in that Iowa State game on yep. Saturday, uh, and he was efficient. And now going back to the post, playing him there, I, I just thought it really made a huge difference. I thought David Gasan was absolutely uh, brilliant at times in this game. Yeah, the thing about it is, is that you know the the effort is always going to be there. And he's not a big guy. He's a tall guy, but he's not a big guy. But he gets by because, number one, he's super athletic. You know, he's an athletic guy. And he's gotten better as the season has gone on. It's like the more time, the more opportunities that he has to be out there, the better that he has gotten. Uh, I wish we could say that about his free throws, but nobody's perfect. It is what it is. I go, but the kid plays extremely hard. You know, he's out there battling. Uh, he wants to win. I'm not saying that everybody doesn't want to win, but you know, you just see some guys that just play harder. They play the game harder than others because let's be honest, he's not the most talented guy, but you know what? You don't have to be the most talented guy. If you give effort and his rebounding and defense and what he brings to K state is effort. And you can't measure that. And a lot of times when you bring effort, you get another guy that's going to bring effort. And then another guy, that's going to bring effort. And I know that's an old cliche, you know, a guy that brings effort and then you, somebody feeds off it. But trust me, people, I've been there. It's the truth. You see one guy do it. Somebody else is going to do it. Maybe I'm the star of the team and maybe I'm not giving as much effort as I should be. I see this guy out there busting his butt. You know what? I'm pretty good. I need to do the exact same thing he does. So couldn't be prouder of this kid. Again, the last three weeks fits. He's been amazing. He's just yeah. been amazing. And again, I'm not saying he's scoring 25 points a game or anything like that. It's just the consistent effort on offense and defense and rebounding. It's it's just been absolutely amazing. I love what I'm seeing from him. Um, I, I, I Again, I know I say I'm proud of the guys all the time and stuff like that, but it's true. I am. I, I love it when a guy gives effort and he's rewarded and they're being rewarded with him playing well. I've got to do a daily delivery after this and also a promo video about the sale. Again, 50% off right now. Go Powercat. If you're a fan of another Big 12 school, they're having the sale too. Go ahead over to your site and, and take care of that. Um, but one of the things that really strikes me right now about this team is I like every kid on this team. There's not a single kid on this team that bugs me with how they conduct themselves away from the court handle the media right these are really good kids but they have driven me insane i'm not sure how i can have a collection of young men that i really truly enjoy and believe me that hasn't always been the case with <laughs> k-state basketball um and yet i dislike them as a team and that's right. the honest truth and i think the reason is because they have this in them they have been competitive despite some of the most horrendous turnover stats in the power six. Their turnover stats, I, we mentioned this the other day on, on one of the shows. I saw one of those graphs, you know, those field graphs where mm -hmm. every K State was just way over on the side all by itself because their turnovers were so bad. Yeah. Uh, their turnover margin, their ratio uh, for and against were just, I mean, how you're even competitive with that is beyond belief. You're competitive because you can do other things well, and they did everything well and didn't turn it over, and we saw them play a really good half of basketball. Mm -hmm. Can they continue it on Thursday? I think they can. I, I really do think they can. Look, part of this is they got to get back. They got to get some rest. 
You know, that, that'll be the first thing is. But, again, it's two days and two days. Th these guys are in shape. It's not like they played five games in five days or something like that. They're in shape. You know, they'll be able to handle that aspect of it. Get back. Bring the intensity. Uh, this is one of those times where, not that any other time you don't rely on your assistant coaches, but in, when you get in the tournament aspect, assistant coaches become really, really key. Because, number one, you got to do the scout. Uh, and so they've already done that. Not that they haven't played Iowa State twice already, yeah. but it is what it is. You still got to do the scout. The second thing is getting your guys prepared to play. A lot of that goes on assistant coaches because it is for a basketball player, when you're on a basketball team, you know, in football, it's easy because there's position coaches. In basketball, you don't have position coaches, but you have guys, okay, one assistant is maybe assigned to three people. Another assistant assigned to three people. And that's kind of how they separated out. Assistants come, become really big when it comes to this because they get guys ready to play. They get their guys, per se, you know, in quotations, their guys ready to play. I think that'll be real key tonight and tomorrow to just get the guys up and ready to play again. And I think they'll come out ready to play because now they've got something to play for, Fitz. Tonight it was, you know what, if we win, Great. We want to try to win. We want to still make it. But tomorrow, they've got a shot. And I think they know if we win this game, we're going to be in the tournament. And that's different than, you know what, we've got two to win. Let's hope we win this first one. Well, you got the first one out of the way. Now they're playing for something. Not that they're playing for a trophy or a title, but they're playing to get in the tournament. And the motivation behind that, it just means more. Yep, I agree. Cincinnati leads... Kansas at halftime, 38-25 at T-Mobile in the nightcap of the second day of the tournament. A five-day event now. I love it. Uh, it'll add a couple more games next year with the addition of four more schools. Um, and uh, this is a very interesting question. Is it better for KSU if KU or Cincinnati wins tonight? Brian, if, if you're a believer that there are limited spots available in the tournament – and that maybe Cincinnati and Kansas State are battling for a spot. Right. You want Kansas to win. Absolutely. Absolutely. I know as K State fans, that's tough to say. That's where I was going. That, <laughs> I know that's <laughs> tough to say. And you guys know me. I don't say anything nice about Kansas. I don't care what. They could give me a million dollars, and I'm going to be upset that they didn't just deposit it in my bank account and they gave it to me in cash. But either way, <laughs> I did you want Kansas to win this game now I don't think they will I never thought once we heard that you know that Dickinson and McClure was out they weren't going to win and I think everybody knew that yeah. but yeah it is definitely better for K-State if Kansas wins I agree I, I I agree I can't do it uh go Bearcats <laughs> I don't know I look I if if they are competing for a spot yeah you do want KU to win but that's not really how the committee works I, I right. think if uh, if you're Indiana State right now, um, you're a little nervous. You didn't win your conference championship. You probably should be an at-large team, but if really good teams with better resumes, I mean, they have like yeah. one quad one win, I believe. Yep. K-State now has five, and tomorrow would make six. How, how do you not put them in over that? Even though I'm a big fan of Larry Nerd, I think he <laughs> is one of my favorite players in a long time in in college basketball. But um, yeah, you know what, Purple Freak, I'm going to put this up. Uh, yeah, I know. I look, I'll let you all handle this and work it out in your own brains how to deal with this. <laughs> it's not easy. Um, no, but keep no. in mind, keep in mind, in World War II, we were allies with the Russians, the Soviets. There you Just go. Saying. That might have been a mistake, but uh, Patton <laughs> might have been right. But that's that's what what it took. Um, you know, Purple Freak uh, adds this: uh, attacking with the ball was nice to see. You know, when they spread the floor and then they went to the rim, it was so much easier. Uh, you know, they just had cleared out some space. I I feel like almost by accident, and I hate this sounds condescending to the coaches, and I certainly don't mean that. They they found things out about their team now. We Maybe it should have been taken care of earlier, but they found that if they do go to that smaller lineup, space the floor, they operate much better with Day-Day handling the ball. 
in free throw situations, give it back to Tyler because he doesn't miss very often. Right. I think they found some things here that work, and I'll be very interested to see how this impacts what they do tomorrow night. Do they revert back to the exact same game plan they used against Iowa State on Saturday? I, I wouldn't think so because, you know, Iowa State will be prepared for that, or do you throw some of this out there? It's going to be very interesting to see how they attack the Cyclones and you know, if they learned anything that they want to keep from tonight. Well, I think they got to do a little bit of everything, you know, because to me, you got to empty the war chest here. You know, everything's on deck yeah. to go win this basketball okay. game. So, because uh, again, we're talking about if you win, you're possibly in the, the, the big dance. So I think they got to do a little bit of everything. But what gives them the opportunity to, to do the lineup that they had tonight and to go that route is Arthur Kaluma is because he's a big athletic guy. And even if you post him up, he's not getting beat up down there on the block. Now, guy, you get a six foot 10 guy, 11 guy or something like that. That's something different. That's a lot bigger than him, but he's able to rebound and hold his own inside. If teams try to post him up, that's the key. So, and a lot of teams in the big 12, that's not, you know, they usually don't play a ton of, you know, double post guys and stuff like that. You know, Houston does that. Um, and, and, you know, Houston's a different beast. So, but yeah, I, th I, th I think they got to do everything. I think they got to yeah. come at this in all different angles because I think, like you said, Iowa State, they're going to be upset that they lost. The First of all, they're really, really good. They're going to make some adjustments. They're going to make K-State work. Well, K-State's got to make them work too. I think one of the things that they did on offense, kind of what you said, they spread it out, but they moved the ball. You know, the ball didn't get stuck a lot tonight, Fitz, no, where didn't. somebody was just dribbling, dribbling, dribbling. That didn't happen. Move the ball. Make the defense work. K-State's all – every basketball team is always better when you do that. And K-State found a little bit of that tonight, got some picks, got some, some switches, and were able to get downhill. And that's kind of what you have to do to be successful. And they just didn't turn it over because the guys that were going downhill with the ball were making plays – because they were capable and not turning it over. Now, when you look at the postgame stats, I'm going to double check this because I still can't wrap my mind around it. Um, the, the biggest thing is the two second half turnovers for K-State. But let me ask you this, Big B. Have you looked at the stats, postgame no. stats? Okay. No. How many three-pointers do you think Max Acemas made in this game? I think it was three. Yeah, he was and three. And they were all like right at the end of the game, weren't they? He was three of 10 from three yeah. point range and he hit all three with the game on the line. Yep. Now I point this out for one reason. Someone asked me, uh, I was doing radio earlier this week. When did this season go wrong for K state? And I don't think they expected my answer. I said, when they lost Max Acemas in the recruiting battle with Texas, yeah, because they never found a true point guard. I mean, Quez Glover never played, but he's not a true point guard either. He probably would have helped. Yeah, Naquan would have helped, but losing Max Acemas to another Big Twelve institution, we saw what he can do. Yeah, as a creator, as a as a true point guard that also shoots. Yeah, can you imagine this team with him and Tyler not having to worry about the point guard stuff? Yeah, they'd be a totally different basketball team. Totally different basketball team. That kid is really good. And again, he struggled shooting the three all night long until they needed him, and then he didn't miss <laughs> until the last, you know, desperation shot at the end. I'm like, golly. I mean, and it's not like K-State was playing bad defense. They were in his face. He just kept making them. I'm like, oh, my goodness. This game is getting closer shooters. than I thought it should be. It was nuts. I, I love pure shooters when they get going. It's yeah. good. You can't stop them. I nope. mean, we K State saw it with with battle with West Virginia when they came to town. He got to cooking. Oh my God, it's beautiful. Yeah. And I saw Ski Jones hit 14 threes. Yes, I was there. I was actually there. Not one of the 35,000 people that now claim they were there when Ski Jones went off. Uh, <laughs> but I was among the few thousand at that NIT game because I was covering it. But uh it, it was a very fun game. We'll see what K State has for uh, tomorrow night we just hit 1600 uh i i don't i don't want to shut this down when we got 1600 people be but what give me some topics here people uh, uh yeah you know what um terry says they k-state only took 13 threes that's this good. was a different attack yeah for k-state no let's let me pop up the stats here um they were five of 13 T tyler perry was uh three or four arthur kaluma was oh for four 
Um, so, you know, that kind of sets things in perspective that Tyler was really selective. Uh, Kaluma with eight rebounds. Cam Carter had seven rebounds. I get on Cam a lot lately. Uh, you know, he, he only had two turnovers. He had two pretty early and costly turnovers, uh, but he, he cleaned it up after that. Perry with four, but man, what an impressive, impressive showing by a K-State team that uh, it had to be fun to be there in person. I mean, I mean the K-Standards looked like they were having a blast. Yep. Um, to see their team do that, to, not just at the Big 12 tournament where this program has lost way too often in, in their first game, but to watch them do it to Texas and finish them off in their final Big 12 game, um, you know, minus postseason where they're not really, maybe they'll run into another Big 12 opponent, but that just had to be incredible to see in person. Yeah, yeah. That's very satisfying, I think, for K-State fans. Very satisfying. It's kind of what you said. They've lost too many times early in this tournament, especially when they were good. And they've just gone out way too early. It's just, you know, it's disheartening because, again, this can be a home atmosphere for K-State if they make it, you know, if 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 we allow it to be. And, and we haven't done a great job of that. We get to this game and we just get beat. So I'm glad that they were able to pull through. But I'll be honest, I'm really, really looking forward to tomorrow. I am because it's going to be it's going to be a fight if we make it a fight. And I think the best way for K-State to win is if we make it a fight, although that's Iowa State's thing. But that's also our thing. I think we got to muck it up as much as we can and just get after them and go fight them. Yeah, I agree. I agree there. Uh, it's turned into a really uh, heated rivalry. Mm -hmm. I mean, there is a lot of heat between these two schools. And honestly, what happened to names, the whole situation around that, I don't want to bring it up, but that, that seemed to crank up the volume. I, I want to pop this one up here uh, real quick. Uh, Paula, thank you. Uh, thank you for the dad joke. I'm a connoisseur. The only turnovers were the PB and J one served in the comp and the concession stand. So uh, I saw our friend Mason Voth. He's with the other site, uh, but we, we really like those guys. Um, do a review of the PB and J. It's what was what, it called? A what? Crustable? I, I, I can't oh. remember what it's. It's, it's a, like a treat. It's a different generation. Uncrustable. Um, ah. They take the crust off, they fry it, and they put a little brown sugar on it. It's a PB and J fried with brown sugar. I Ooh. look, it just sounds like too much going on for me. You know, it sounds like. Uh, uh, let me put it in terms I can better understand. It's like drinking vodka and then deciding to have a, a Woodford and then throwing in some tequila. That's yeah. way that that menu item sounds to me. But Mason said it was pretty good. He said there's a lot of flavors going, a lot going on. Like I said, uh, but he liked it. He liked. It. I don't know if it's. I've had a fried PB and J sandwich at the Texas State Fair, and that thing was heaven. Just really? it, you're right. There's a lot going on, but it was absolutely delicious. Absolutely delicious. And I'm glad we got to the important shit. You know, as <laughs> as we're winding down here, um, I'm not. I don't know why Kansas State keeps having these kind of fringe items on the menu. I mean, this is a beef school. Give them, you know. Um, beef sliders or something for god's sakes help us out here but apparently this one's better than the horrendous tacos they had last year um let's see i haven't even read this one i'm popping it up i hope mutated pitch i uh, has something good here if the net uh committee considers how much you win by does it consider how much you lose by text text uh that's all limited um here's what really bothers me about the net you know kansas state going into the tournament um little self-promotion here earlier this week leading into the big 12 tournament i did one of our deep purple videos i do the daily delivery almost every day um i took a couple days off this week uh and one of those days was a deep purple in which i did blind resumes cincinnati going into the tournament was 41st in the net rankings and k-state was 71st I'm, it doesn't make sense to me because then when you line the items up they had played more quad one games and one less. The case it had was, I believe I'm getting this right, four and nine in quad one games. Cincinnati was three and 10. Case it had no quad three and four losses. Cincinnati had a couple. I can't make sense of it, Brian. And Zach Carlson pointed out to me that it's entirely possible that um, the K State just didn't win by enough against the Chicago States, a game that went to overtime, and that just right. trashed the net ranking. I'm not sure right. if that's how it works. 
nobody can quite understand. Uh, as my wife's now trying to get dude out uh, because it's his pill time. This is what's going on in the studio. We got <laughs> just a lot of nonsense. Uh, uh, Blaze says he loves the DDs. I, thank you. I, I, I don't know. What, after this, I have no idea what I'm going to say on the DD for tomorrow. I'll probably just say day, day, aim, stay, day, aims for three minutes and call it good. <laughs> Yeah, he played really well. He he played well. But back to the net rating, I don't yeah. know exactly. I mean, of course, they don't give you nope. a, a calculation on how it works, but I think that probably has something to do with it. But if you do remember, Fitz, a couple of years back, the committee said, remember, they're not taking in, you know, a, a average margin of victory, that they weren't going to use that as one of the metrics uh, on who, how you get into the tournament. It was just whether you win or whether you lose. And it didn't matter by how much. I don't believe that. I absolutely don't believe it because I just think that if you win 18 games and you don't win any by more than eight points, they're going to count that against you, especially in your non-con. And I think that probably has something to do with why Kansas State, their net ranking is much lower than what it probably should be. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I I think something they really need to. Uh, I hope I'm sure members of the committee are amongst the people watching. I'm sure they're they're sitting in wherever they're sequestered at. I don't know if it's Kansas City still, or if it's Indianapolis. I I don't know. Um, I'm sure they're watching this right now. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, why wouldn't they? I think a, a factor they really need to calculate in is how teams did in overtime. Hmm. I, I think I think adding in the overtime winning percentage um, <laughs> might explain why K State ended up a four seed in the tournament. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, and I, in all seriousness, though, I think their performance in overtimes points exactly to the reason why this has been a frustrating season. They've now won, I believe, what nineteen games. Mm -hmm. Seven of them are in overtime. Yeah, it's astonishing. Yeah, but they won every game. They went into overtime. It's like when they lock in and they're laser focused, boom, they make the yeah. plays. They cut down the mistakes and they get it done. But yes. they just haven't done that through games until this second half when they were just so good. Yeah, uh, I mean, it, I don't know in recent memory that somebody's had seven overtime games. Number one, seven overtime games seems like a ton for a season, but then to win all of them. I'm not sure when the last time anything like that's happened, but you're right. It's like when they get focused and it's almost like, okay, we went into overtime. Okay. Now it's winning time where if you just make that focus, maybe with five minutes left in the game or uh, don't get me wrong, the entire game. But you know, if you give the laser focus and you have to shave it down five minutes to go, let's get real razor sharp here and let's go ahead and end this game. Then maybe you don't go to overtime and, and guys like me and you, we don't lose all our hair watching these games. But I don't I know. Maybe that's just me. I had a beautiful head of hair before the season. I think you all remember that. It was a, it was an afro, and it was a, it was like Fletch. Yes. Um. Yes. Uh. I, I loved it. I think it was a West Virginia overtime game when uh, Desi Sills tweeted out "Final five. and I'm like, yeah, there's a final five in the forty minutes too. Yes. You know, could could we sure. take care of that final five? Yeah. Uh, and I've had a running joke with Coach Tang that he keeps keeping me up at night with the overtime game because almost all of them have been evening games. Um, <laughs> just ruining my bedtime. Uh, I think, Big B, you got anything else before we wrap it up? I don't think so. I, I think I, I'm just proud of the guys. I think they played well. Uh, they played hard in the second half. The best second half I've seen them play. I think it's the best that they've played all year in the second half it, because it came against a good opponent. We don't have yeah. to like Texas to respect them. And yep. they are a good basketball team. And K-State played well against them. And, and look, Texas didn't give us anything either, Fitz. They were playing tough defense. We just took it to them. Yep. We're going to have to do the exact same thing tomorrow. And if we do, I feel like me and you will be right back here tomorrow doing the exact Maybe. same thing. That's just me, Maybe. though. That's just I, me. I, I would love to. Kansas State wins 78-74 in the second round of the Big 12 tournament. A little housekeeping here. Big B and I will be live tomorrow at 1 with the Big 12 Insiders. We were going to do a show on the tournament um, in general tomorrow, live at 1 p.m. I think it's now going to skew towards K-State because, honestly, K-State, and if Cincinnati holds on and wins, 
they're the big stories right now out of the tournament. Uh, so we'll be talking about that a lot. Make sure you're checking out the Big 12 Insiders. Make sure you're subscribing to both the Go Power Cat and Big 12 Insiders channels um, on YouTube. Our numbers keep going up. We've hit 1,700. Uh, folks, I got to go to bed. I'm old. Uh, I, I'm cranky. I still got some more work to do. Uh, I'm I'm pretty soon I'm going to look just hideous. I'll, well, I do anyhow. anyhow. But we have 50% of Go Power Cat. I wander into the weeds so easily. Um, 50% off right now. To subscribe to Go Power Cat or your school's 24-7 site right now, tonight. Uh, make sure you take care of that. We thank everyone for showing up. Even the five that just showed up while I was talking um, at the end here. Uh, okay, Coop, uh, much appreciated. We appreciate your appreciation. That's going to wrap it up for this edition of a GPC Live. We'll be live tomorrow with the Big 12 Insiders. Constant uh, content is coming from both the Go Power Cat and Insiders channels. Make sure you're checking it out. We had a lot of fun. B, we did an hour. We got the hour done, man. Yes, sir. <laughs> Thanks to everyone it. for uh, listening. Let me let me get over here and get back to producing. Uh, we appreciate everyone uh, listening and uh, joining us. And yeah, we dropped below 1700. We can leave now. Have a great night, everyone. Hopefully we see you tomorrow night with another one of these.